In many ways, the 20th century was a remarkable time for human rights. More laws and institutions were created to protect human rights during this period than at any other time in history. Today, the vast majority of nations in the world have signed on to the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, proposed by the United Nations in 1948. And for the first time in history, most countries have adopted national constitutions that explicitly protect individual rights and freedoms. Still, human rights remain a concern in countries throughout the world. Despite their public commitments, many nations secretly violate the rights of their citizens for political, economic, social, and religious reasons. In fact, of the 196 countries in the world today, 112 reportedly tortured their own citizens in 2012. In addition, more than 1 billion people live in countries where they have no say in their government and face severe consequences for exercising the most basic rights. Among the worst countries for human rights in 2013 were North Korea, Saudi Arabia, Syria, Somalia, and Sudan. One organization working tirelessly to improve human rights around the world is Amnesty International. Amnesty is the largest human rights group in history, with more than 3 million members globally in more than 150 countries and territories. Amnesty was founded by a pioneer in the field of human rights, Peter Benenson, a visionary activist with a powerful commitment to social justice. Peter Benenson was born in London in 1921, the son of educated middle-class parents. As a child, Benenson was tutored by the world-famous poet W. H. Auden, and he went on to study at various distinguished schools, including Eton College and Oxford University. Benenson began his charitable work when he was just 16 years old, providing assistance to children who were orphaned by the Spanish Civil War. That same year, as the Nazis increased their power in Germany, Benenson began to worry about the fate of Jews in the Third Reich. He organized fundraising efforts with his friends so he could pay for Jewish Germans to escape to England. When World War II broke out in 1939, Benenson joined the British military, where he worked as a cryptographer, breaking German codes. During the war, he also helped his mother find homes for refugee children who had fled to England from Europe. When the war was over, Benenson went back to school and became a lawyer, specializing in cases involving human rights. Early in his career, he was sent to observe political trials in Spain, one of the last fascist countries still standing after the war. Benenson was shocked by the human rights violations he saw in the courtroom and confronted the judge with a list of complaints. In the end, his efforts helped to win the defendants an acquittal in that case. At this point, Benenson was beginning to find his calling. Working with a small group of lawyers, he began monitoring trials in other repressive countries. After several successes, Benenson and his group formed an organization called Justice, which worked to ensure that human rights were upheld in courtrooms across Europe and Africa. According to Benenson, he experienced a major turning point in 1960. He came across a newspaper article about two students who were arrested in Portugal for making a public toast in praise of freedom. The students were sentenced to seven years in prison by the Portuguese government, which was ruled by a repressive military dictatorship at the time. The story incensed Benenson. He was uncertain what to do next, but the article made him realize he had to do something. That's when Benenson came up with the idea for a letter-writing campaign. He hoped to organize hundreds of people to write letters, requesting the release of the students, creating a massive appeal for amnesty. I became aware that lawyers themselves were not able sufficiently to influence the course of justice in undemocratic countries, Benenson later said. It was necessary to think of a larger group, which would harness the enthusiasm of people all over the world who were anxious to see a wider respect for human rights. Initially, his support was limited and local, but he was convinced the idea could work. On May 28, 1961, he wrote an article that was published on the front page of a major British newspaper. The article, titled The Forgotten Prisoners, called attention to prisoners all around the world who were arrested unjustly for political reasons. Benenson appealed to readers to step forward and take action for these prisoners of conscience, a term he coined that would soon become popular. The article was far more successful than he could have imagined, attracting thousands of supporters. In July of 1961, shortly before his 40th birthday, a meeting of supporters from Europe and the U.S. got together with Benenson and formed a permanent international movement, and Amnesty International was born. Within weeks, the organization had branches in several countries, including Switzerland, Germany, Holland, France, and Italy. 
By the end of 1963, after just two years of existence, Amnesty International had 350 different branches in more than seven countries worldwide. They had adopted a total of 770 prisoners and had already secured the release of 140 of them. In 1964, Benenson was formally appointed president of the organization, but his official leadership did not last very long. After a dispute with the executive committee, Benenson decided to resign for the good of the organization, stepping aside so that new leadership might be brought in. In 1977, the organization was awarded a Nobel Peace Prize for its contribution in defending human dignity against violence and subjugation. Benenson could not have been more proud. In 1981, on Amnesty's 20th anniversary, Benenson was invited back for an official celebration. The organization embraced his return, and once again, Benenson became actively involved in promoting the group and speaking out on its behalf. Benenson was especially active in the 1990s, as the collapse of communism resulted in numerous human rights issues. Since Benenson originally founded Amnesty International, it has fought to protect the rights of more than 47,000 prisoners of conscience. The vast majority of these prisoners have already been released, and dozens more are set free every year. Over time, the organization has moved beyond Benenson's initial focus on prisoners and become involved in a much wider range of causes. The organization now works to protect the rights of children and women, help political refugees, fight against the use of torture, and ban the use of landmines. Without question, Benenson's brainchild has blossomed into a powerfully effective force for promoting freedom and justice around the world. However, Benenson's remarkable career came to an end in 2005, when he died of pneumonia after a long struggle with the illness. At his funeral, Irene Kahn, the Secretary General of Amnesty International, said, This was a man whose conscience shone in a cruel and terrifying world, who believed in the power of ordinary people to bring about extraordinary change. And by creating Amnesty International, he gave each of us the opportunity to make a difference.